perfect time to segue, gang. Good morning, good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. So uh, I, if you're not uh, alive uh, and you aren't uh, doing your job, you wouldn't know that the market is shifting. But if you're alive and you're doing your job, you know that the market is shifting. Everybody's felt that, right? Give me a, a high sign. Yes. Give me a, yeah. Yes, the market is shifting. And just look, I've been in the business uh, Leslie, uh, for about 30 years, coming up on 30 years this year. And what I've realized is that there are four types of markets. Uh, there's the increasing market, which tends to favor sellers. You know, when prices are going up, of course, that's, uh, that's good for sellers. It, uh, it brings sellers into the marketplace. Uh, in a decreasing market, that uh, tends to be uh, good uh, for uh, buyers, you know, decreasing meaning prices are falling. It makes homes more affordable. Uh, then there's the flat market. Uh, it's, uh, it's a market where, you know, we're not seeing uh, any significant appreciation or depreciation. It's just maintaining. And then you have transitioning markets. And that's the sort of market we're in right now. We're transitioning. We're transitioning from what has been a very highly dominated seller's market uh, and we're moving towards uh, more of a, a buyer's market. And you might say, well, wait a minute, interest rates are going up. That's that, that's not a buyer's market. Well, it, it is to the extent that we're seeing prices moderate. We're seeing not as many offers on homes and the balance of power is starting to shift away from sellers who could say, you know, months ago, that uh, we don't want an offer contingent upon appraisal. We don't want an offer contingent upon uh, an inspection. Uh, we want to uh, quote unquote rent back without paying any rent back. We want to stay in the home for 60 days. Those sorts of things start to erode and aren't available to sellers when they sell the market. So we're moving away from that sort of a market and the, the, the power is shifting towards uh, buyers. Now, it doesn't mean yet that we're in a, uh, an exclusively buyer's market. I think that we're still in a, in, a, in a market gang, and I firmly believe this, that's great for both buyers and sellers, even though interest rates are higher. You know, the, the Fed uh, this week uh, is meeting Tuesday and Wednesday uh, with the intention of increasing interest rates on Wednesday. They're expecting interest rates will go up by uh, a half percent. And right now, I don't know, we're about 5.6, 5.7 is the average across the nation. So we're going to be well over 6% on interest rates. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, they're talking about, again, in July, increasing interest rates by another half percent. So, you know, over the next couple of months, we could see interest rates as high as, as 8%. You might say, oh, no, wait a minute. That's not good. Well, I don't know if it's good or not good. I, uh, my opinion is that ultimately it doesn't matter. I, just to give you some perspective, you know, historical interest rates since the 1970s uh, have averaged right around 6%. So that, that's an average. But, you know, when I got into the business in the early 1990s, interest rates were 8, 85 9%. And I remember uh, as a kid in the early 1980s, interest rates hit over 18%. And then, of course, we've gotten used over the last several years to interest rates being in the 3 to 4%, even dipping below 3%. Gang, Really, none of that matters only to the extent that you realize that it takes the same thing to sell a home regardless. It takes the same thing to help a buyer find a home regardless of what sort of market we're in. The only thing that really changes is the conversations we're having with our clients, really, ultimately, because what you have to do in terms of marketing your home, the, the listing, or what you have to do in terms of showing homes to buyers that process is really ultimately the same. The only difference in any of these markets is the conversations we're having ultimately with the buyers and sellers. And so I wanna talk just uh, more about ultimately the different conversation that we're gonna to have to start having uh, with uh, particularly our sellers. And it's about having a, a, a pricing strategy. Now. The sort of market that we have been in over the last several years, you, you didn't need a pricing strategy. The market took care of that. All you had to do was uh, put the home on the market and it would sell for uh, historically high numbers. Uh, people were selling their homes for higher than uh, they ever had on average in the history of this country. You didn't need a pricing strategy. You didn't need to pay attention ultimately to uh, whether you were getting showings, because the fact is that any home, regardless of price, was getting showings. 
Well, we're transitioning from that sort of market. We're not in that sort of market now. And I'm sure you're seeing that homes are being put on the market and they're sitting there for a week, two weeks, even three weeks and not getting an offer. Anybody experiencing that, seeing that? And I'm not saying that it's prevalent, but we're starting to see it. Are you seeing that? Have you experienced that? Definitely have been seeing it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's out there. And so the question is, well, what, what do we do differently? Well, again, it, does, it goes back to, well, the process isn't necessarily different, but the conversations are because we don't get to determine ultimately what the market's going to do. But what we have the opportunity to do is change the way in which we approach it, you know, mentally, as well as uh, the conversations that we're having with uh, potential buyers and sellers, and specifically today in terms of what we're talking about sellers with the, with the pricing strategy. So how many of you uh, have not ever implemented what I would call a full-fledged pricing strategy? Does anybody know what I mean when I say pricing strategy? Anybody confused by that? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Yes. I know what it means. Okay, so yes, uh, you're confused, or yes, you 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 um, you've used one before. Confused. Okay. All right. Well, so uh, it, and I'm seeing a lot of responses in the in the in the chat line as well that, that you're confused. So it's interesting, gang, because in markets like the one that we've been experiencing for the last several years. You really don't need a pricing strategy. Well, what is a pricing strategy? A pricing strategy is nothing more than a conversation where you're setting expectations with a seller. So if you have an opportunity to take a listing in this sort of market that's transitioning, you need to make certain that you're having a conversation with them. Well, John, about what? Well, ultimately about where the market has been in the past, where it is today, and where we believe it's going. Let me say that again. A pricing strategy starts with a conversation about where the market has been. Okay, so if you're taking notes, which I would encourage you to do, a, a pricing strategy starts with a conversation about where the market has been, where it is currently, and where we believe it's going to go over the next several months, you know, over the next uh, 90 to 180 days. And the reason that's important is because when you're in a transitioning market, it's good to acknowledge we're where we were, but now where we are, which is different than where we were. And then if we're in a, a continually transitioning market, right, one that we expect is going to continue to shift in, in a different direction, like the one that we're in, then we need to, of course, talk about that as well. For example, we know that the Fed is going to be changing interest rates this week, but there's the expectation that next month they're going to continue to do that. So it would be important to you know, let the seller know what sort of market we're, we're in and let them know this is where the market was, this is where it is, and this is the market that we believe we're going into, a market where interest rates are going to continue to increase, which would obviously have an impact on demand and what prices that sell or buyers are willing to pay. So it starts with that conversation, just really updating them on what the market has been doing, what it is doing currently, and what we expect it to do over the next 90 to 180 days, Okay. The second thing is this, we need to have a conversation about ultimately what the pricing strategy looks like, okay? So uh, when I'm sitting down with a seller, the conversation really is introduced by talking about who gets to determine uh, the, the price of a home. Ultimately, gang, a seller gets to determine the price of a home, but the market gets to determine the value. They're not the same thing. There's the price and there's the value. I'll give you just an example. If Coca-Cola decided to charge $100 for a bottle of Coke, would you buy that bottle of Coke? And of course, the answer is no, you wouldn't. And why is that? Because the price that they're asking is not in alignment with the value. You see, a, a, a can of Coke or a bottle of Coke is worth probably about 50 cents or a dollar, depending upon how thirsty you are and whether you're, not, whether you're at a sporting event or not, right? You might be willing to pay five bucks for a... Uh, a, a can of Coke if you're at the Dodgers game. But ultimately, we know that a can of Coke has a, a very limited value range. And so if Coca-Cola decided to charge 100 bucks for a can of Coke, none of us is buying it. At least I'm not. I don't know about you. Maybe you're that addicted that you would, but, but I wouldn't, right? So what we know is that we're, we're in a market, right, where there is only so much uh, 
the elasticity. In other words, buyers uh, are only willing to pay so much. Well, we're in a shifting market where buyers and their uh, buying power is decreasing because interest rates are increasing. So we need to have a conversation with sellers about what pricing uh, versus, versus value is. Price is the price, the amount that a seller wants to ask for the property. Value is what the market is willing to pay. They're two different things. And what we have to do as, as an agent, as a listing agent, is to make certain that the seller's expectation for price is in alignment with the actual value of the home. So we want to start out by just talking about where the market was, where it is, and where it's going. And then we want to talk ultimately about what the process of the pricing strategy looks like. It's usually about a 21 day cycle. So if I were sitting down with the seller at the kitchen table and talking about listing their home, we would talk about working together as a team to determine the, the, uh, the price of the home that is equal to or less than the value that the market deems the home has. Now, let me say that again. We're gonna work together as a team. It's a language that I use very specifically with the seller. I always say, look, the good news is that you get to determine the price of your home. The bad news is that ultimately the market gets to determine the value. And our job working together as a team, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, our job of working together as a team is to, de is to determine a price that's equal to or less than that value that the market's going to pay. And usually when I say that, they say, okay, that makes sense, okay? So we wanna make certain that we set the expectation that we're gonna have this conversation and I talk about it being a 21 day cycle. Now, what do I mean by a 21 day cycle? Well, I list the home and then within 21 days, we're going to adjust the price that we're asking for the home if it's not sold. And the, then the question that's raised is, well, by how much are we gonna reduce it? Well, it depends upon what's happening in the market and specifically what's happening with the marketing of the, of the listing that you have, the seller's home. So let me just go through what that, that really looks like ultimately. We judge that based upon the number of showings ultimately that we get on a weekly basis. So we pay attention to the first week, the second week, and then ultimately the third week. And we don't normally go beyond three weeks before we then make an adjustment to the price of the homes. Does this so far make sense? If you have questions, please ask questions. Okay, Leslie says it makes sense. Anybody else? Let me know that we're in agreement. We're in agreement. Okay, perfect. Yes. So, yes, perfect. So we pay attention to showings. Showings are a great indicator as to how well we price the home. Okay, I just want you to think about that. In a normal market, when I say normal, because I, I really think that the market we've been in for the last 18 months to two years Highly abnormal. I have never seen a market like that. Uh, the sort of market that we've all experienced in the last uh, 18 to 24 months, highly, highly unusual, right? Not what I would consider a, a quote unquote typical market. So in this period of time, we've seen you know, prices like increase, not only to historic highs, but increase very rapidly. Well, we're starting to see the brakes put on. And so we've got to have conversations with sellers about in this sort of market that's transitioning, we have to pay attention to the showings. So I always explain to the sellers that the best barometer for how we're doing in terms of the price that we've selected and whether it, it is the right price for the market, in other words, the price is equal to the value in the present market, is we just pay attention to the showings. The showings will tell us because that at the end of the day, it is a representation as to how much interest there is on the part of the buyers. If you don't have a buyer, you don't sell your home. So I look at three general ranges in terms of showings. If we have uh, say five to seven showings a week or more, uh, and we go three weeks and the home doesn't sell, what does that tell us about the home? Does it tell us that, uh, it hasn't been on the market long enough? Does it tell us that uh, the price is too low? Does it tell us that the price is too high? What does that tell us if it's been on the market for a week, we've had five to seven showings? Yeah, it, that's right, it's, it's too high. And what is interesting gang is that over the years I've had agents, Leslie, who will say to me, you know, I've got this home on the market, it's priced right, 
but I just, I'm not getting any showings or I'm not, it's, I'm getting showings, but I'm not getting any offers. Well, they're mostly correct. I, I can't correct their math in terms of the number of showings. I, I can't correct their math in terms of the number of offers because all of that's correct. But what they're not correct about is that the price of the home is too high. They say that it's the right price. Well, it isn't. Gang, if a home is on the market for three weeks and you don't get an offer, I'm just telling you historically, it means that the price is too high. Now, I'm not here to say that I haven't been through markets where average days on markets, you know, is 60, 90 days or more. But the fact is that's an average. The fact is that a home priced right in any market will sell within just a few weeks historically without a problem. The only challenge ultimately is the price of the home. Agents will come to me and say, uh, well, you know, it's got a, uh, uh, it, it, it's got a problem. It's by a bunch of power lines. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's preventing it from selling. And my response to that is no, that is not what's preventing it from selling. The power lines are not relevant. What's relevant is that you've priced the home higher than it should based upon its features, benefits, and condition. And one of the uh, conditions of the home is, is that it's next to a bunch of power lines. So therefore, you've overpriced the home. It's not the power lines. It's that you've priced it incorrectly because people will buy homes next to power lines if they're priced appropriately. Could you agree on that? We just have to make certain we find the price that's in alignment with the value of a home that's next to a bunch of power lines, right? Say yes. Yeah. So our job is to just simply pay attention to the number of showings and then make certain that we are giving feedback to the seller. The last thing that we want to do, gang, is to not set the expectations of the seller. So it's important that when we sit down with them to list their home, we set the expectation that we have a pricing strategy. We cover the pricing strategy with them, and then we let them know what's going to happen ultimately when we use the pricing strategy effectively. And ultimately the culmination of a correct pricing strategy, right? Having a powerful pricing strategy is that we reduce the price of the home as many times as needed until we find the right price that the home actually sells. And usually it doesn't take a cycle of more than once or twice. In other words, go through a 21 day cycle and adjust it and then we get it sold. You might have to do it twice, but I don't know that I would even go another 21 days and pay attention on a week to week basis. But if we have five to seven showings or more and we have no offers, uh, yes, the market's telling us that it's overpriced. If we have say three to five showings and we don't get any offers, uh, again, what is the market telling us? Overpriced. Yeah, same thing, it's, it's overpriced. And now let's just imagine that we go uh, zero to three showings. Let's say that over the course of three weeks, we have no showings to maybe one a week at most. What is, of course, that telling us? It's telling us again that the home is overpriced, but it's telling us what? If we're getting, say, three to five showings versus no showings or zero to three showings, what is it telling us? Well, the home's not overpriced at too much, but it is overpriced. See, if we're not getting any showings, it's telling us that the home is massively overpriced. Now, what is massively? Well, gang, if we're getting five to seven showings and we're not getting it uh, sold, I would say that we're probably somewhere between three to 5% overpriced, okay? If we're getting three to five showings a week and we're not getting any offers, then we're probably five to 7% overpriced. If we're not getting any showings or maybe one a week over the course of three weeks, I would argue that we're probably somewhere 10% or more overpriced. Now, those numbers can change a little bit. Those percentages, when I say we're, say, three to five or five to seven or 10% or more, it changes a little bit. But those are pretty good guideposts. Well, John, what affects that? What would make it different? Well, the specific market would, would affect that, okay? Depending upon how quickly the market is moving. And, and that's exactly right, Leslie. You have to take a look at recent solds. Take a look at where they're selling, for what percentage of list price they're selling, you know, the original list price, and just pay attention to what's happening in the market. You have to know your days on market. You have to know your average uh, sales price to list price, and you have to see what the general trend is in the market. And if you're aware of that, then you'll have a pretty good idea as to what percentage within those categories of showings you need to reduce it. Because remember, I said that 
in the first instance, if you have five to seven showings in each week and it doesn't sell, then you're somewhere between three and 5%. I didn't give you exact number. I said it's within this range, maybe 3%, maybe 4%, maybe 5%. It could be 6%. It really depends upon what's happening specifically in the market. So you have to pay attention to that. But again, I, ex I describe that pricing strategy to sellers. I share with them what that strategy is and I make certain that they uh, understand it and then buy off on that and know that that is something that we're going to execute. So let's just very quickly, Leslie, if you can, can you take your phone off of mute? Leslie, are you there? Oh, you don't have a microphone. Somebody who has a microphone, take their phone off the mute for me. Gotcha. Okay, who is it? Because I didn't see who you are. Veronica. Oh, Veronica. Cool. Hey, I don't. For whatever reason, there's no picture, so I, I can't. I can't <laughs> see you. Okay, Veronica. So let's just imagine that you're the seller. I'm the agent. We're sitting down at the kitchen table. I'm going to describe to you what the pricing strategy looks like. Fair enough. Fair. Okay, good. So, Veronica, one of the important things that we have to do in today's market is really pay attention to pricing. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I'm sure you've been paying attention or at least you've heard that we're in a market that's shifting. We're not in the same market today that we were, say, 90 to 180 days ago. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. All right. What have you seen as you've, have you, as you've paid attention to the market and you've considered putting your home in the market? What are you seeing happening? I'm, I'm noticing price reductions and yeah. homes are on the market a little longer than a few months ago. Yep. That's exactly right. You're spot on, man. You're, you know, so much, maybe you should consider getting a real estate license and selling some real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you're, you're spot on. And, and, and here's the important thing. It really doesn't matter that that's happening because, you know, there are all sorts of markets. There are increasing markets, decreasing markets or flat markets. And then there are transitioning markets, and that's really the market that we're in. The only reason it really matters is because we need to pay attention to the way we approach the market so that we can get your home sold. Because we can get your home sold in any market. We just have to have the right plan. Does that make sense? It does. Good. So I want to share with you that plan. I have, unlike most real estate agents, I actually have a pricing strategy. One of the things that I think is important, especially in a transitioning market, is that you and I have a conversation. Really, we work together as a team to determine the price of your home so that it can actually sell and that we have a strategy so that as we pick a price, if that price isn't what the market's willing to pay, that we know what we have to do in the coming weeks to actually get your home sold so we can get you to San Diego when you want to. So if I could, let just first of all, let's just talk honestly about the difference between price and value. When I say those two words to you, price and value, um, what do you think about that? I mean, do you, do you see the difference between price and value? Do you know who sets price and know who determines value of your home? Uh, well, explain to me because I've heard um, my friends that had just sold their house have said that to price it high and then possibly reduce the price and um, maybe I'll get the price that I want. Right, right. You know what? And I, I've heard that a lot. And, you know, there's actually a market in which that strategy works. And it's like an increasing market, the one that we've been experiencing over the last 18 to 24 months. The challenge is because we're shifting away from that sort of market. Interest rates are increasing. Some, a, a lot of buyers are pulling out of the market. We can't afford to take that approach because what ends up happening is that your home sits on the market and like any product, imagine a loaf of bread that sits on the shelf too long. What ends up happening to that loaf of bread? It starts to spoil. Yeah, it starts to spoil. It gets stale and products that are stale, you know, they take them off the shelf, they put them in the basket and sell them at a discount, right? So one of the things that we wanna be careful to do is make certain that we don't overprice the home. But the challenge is that I don't have a crystal ball. So I don't know exactly what your home's going to sell for, but that's the importance of you and me working together as a team so we can determine a price that's equal to or less than the value that the market's willing to pay. But if we, by chance, if we miss that mark, then we need to have a pricing strategy. So let me just describe to you what that pricing strategy looks like. Would that be okay? Sounds fair. Okay, great. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at comparables. We're going to do everything that an appraiser would do to determine a price that the market's willing to pay. We're going to look at all the, the, the top homes, usually three to four, that have sold in your marketplace. And then based upon all of that information, you and I are going to select a price to put your home on the market at. Now, what we're going to do is in the first week, second week, and third week, if we need to go that far, each week we're going to have a conversation about what's been happening. You and I are going to talk about my marketing efforts, everything that, that I'm doing and my company's doing to market and expose your home to a high degree. We're going to have that conversation on a weekly basis. We're also going to talk about my prospecting efforts, what I've been doing to find buyers to match them with your home. Because one of the great things about me is I'm very proactive. I go out and prospect, I door knock, I make phone calls, and I try to find buyers specifically for your home. So we're going to have that conversation weekly. And then we're going to talk about the reviews of your home. In other words, what the market's been saying, any showings, what those buyers have said, what the agents who've shown your home have said, and then also what's happening online in terms of uh, views and clicks, you know, the, the online uh, uh, eyeballs, people who are looking at your home online and, and what's happening there. We're going to talk about those three things consistently every single week. Would, you, would that be important to you? Would you like to have that conversation, to have that information on a weekly basis? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. So then let's make certain that we're doing that. Now, I want to have that conversation weekly because if we go a week and you don't have any showings on your home and I've done all of those marketing things, I've made all of those phone calls, knocked on all of those doors, and we didn't get any showings, you know, what do you think the market's telling us at that point? Well, um, I don't know. Maybe do I need to clean my house up a little bit more? Well, no, your home is beautiful. I love the way that it looks. Uh, I mean, don't you think you have a nice home? Well, I do, but I don't know what anyone else would yeah. think. Well, at this, at this, you know, Veronica, it's a good point. At this point, we don't know, do we? Because nobody's come in to take a look at your home. Correct. So it's only been a week. So at this point, it would be premature. But what, what we would need to do is we would need to have a conversation the following week to see what's happened. So what we would do is we would wait a week and we would again have a conversation about my marketing efforts. We would talk about my prospecting efforts. And then we would talk about any potential reviews of buyers who may have made an appointment and looked at your home. OK, so hopefully if we went the first week without showings, hopefully the second week we'd get some showings. But let's just imagine that we didn't get any showings. Right. Or maybe we got two to three showings, but uh -huh. we didn't get an offer. What do you think the market's telling us? That is a good question. That's why I hired you for to let me know. Right. Well, okay. So here's what is interesting. If we know that your home has been in the market for 14 days and you didn't get any showings, uh, or maybe you got two or three showings, but worse, you didn't get any offers. What do you think buyers are saying about your home when we know that other homes are selling and yours is sitting on the market? Uh, could it be that maybe the interest rate is deterring them or maybe there is there more inventory that I should be worried about? Maybe some competition well, or something? I think that those two things are correct. Certainly interest rates have gone up. So buyers uh, have less buying power, which means that they're looking for homes that are priced correctly. Uh, and we've also seen that, uh, you know, inventories are starting to increase. So buyers have more choices. Knowing that they have more choices, then we should be more competitive when it comes to what? Gotcha. More, more, more competitive uh, compared to what? To other homes out there, possibly. Yeah, to other homes out okay. there. Okay. All right. And the only way we do that, we can't move your home, right? We can't double the square footage of it. So, what's the one thing that we have control over? Well, hopefully, it's not having to lower the price of my home because I need that amount of money to be able to move to San Diego. Of course, of course absolutely. I understand that. And yet, ultimately, you want to get your home sold, right, Veronica? Correct. Right. So the thing that my job and your job is to just simply select a price that is going to be equal to the value that the market's willing to pay. But if we fail to do that, if we select a price that's higher than the market's willing to pay and we don't get showings or worse, we don't get any offers, ultimately what's going to happen or what's not going to happen? Well, possibly it's going to be stay on the market for a while. I might not be able to sell my home. I have to right. think of different strategy, possibly. Right. And, and that strategy, ultimately, Veronica, you've just hit the nail on the head, is making certain that upfront in the beginning, 
we select the best price possible to make that happen to get you to to San Diego and to have this pricing strategy so that on a weekly basis we're talking about what's happening and whether we need to adjust the price based upon the message that the market is telling us so that ultimately we can get you to San Diego in the time that you want. Here's what's important about the market that we're in currently, Veronica. We're in a market that's transitioning, meaning more inventory is being put on the market, meaning interest rates are increasing. If inventory is increasing and interest rates are increasing, do you think that's going to make buyers more willing to pay higher prices or less willing to pay higher prices? I, I probably less prices for sure. Yeah, lower prices, which means that every week that goes by, every month that goes by, you potentially have the chance of getting less for your home. Make sense? Gotcha. Okay. So uh -huh. what we want to do is make sure that we're implementing this pricing strategy. Okay. So the pricing strategy is basically if we have five to seven showings a week and we go three weeks without an offer, we need to price, we need to reduce the price of home between three and 5%. If it's on the market for three weeks and each week we have three to five showings and we have no offers, we know that the home is priced historically somewhere between five and 7% higher than what it should. And if we go three weeks and have no uh, showings or one to two to three showings, then we know historically your home is overpriced uh, by 10% uh, or more. And so we need to work together as a team to have that conversation so we can adjust, we can respond to the market so that we can get you to San Diego when you want. Does that make sense? It makes sense, yes. Great, okay. So based upon that, let's sit down and actually work through as a team, the price of the home, let's select that right price and then let's move forward and uh, have that weekly conversation until we get your home under contract and we get you to San Diego. Are you ready to get started? Sounds good, but I do have a question. What about, sure. um, uh, commission. Wouldn't I save money on commission if we reduce the commi uh, um, the commissions? Yeah. So we're, we're honest, we could have we could have that conversation. Uh, we're out of the role play. We could have that conversation. We are completely out of time. But let's let's make certain that we're having that. Ultimately, what I would say to you is this conversation about uh, uh, pricing and the commission are two separate conversations. So ultimately, what I would do, without getting into all the detail, I would say, you know what. That is a really good question. Let's table that for a second, and then we're going we're gonna to determine what the commission is going to be, right? But let's first of all determine a price, and then we can talk about commission. But I don't want you determining, as a seller, I don't want you determining your price based upon what my commission is or isn't. Does that make sense? Okay, sounds fair. So what I don't want to do, and we're not in the role play right now, I, what I don't want to do is have a conversation about price in the light of what my commission is. Let's first of all, just isolate okay. that the, the price is a standalone issue. Then we can talk about commission. And if you wanna to try to link those after the fact, that's great. But what I don't want you doing is coloring your the price that you want based upon what my commission is going to be. Cause they're not relative at all, they're not. What, what okay. my commission is or isn't doesn't affect the value of your home. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yes. Okay. All right, so we can role play that another time. But uh, thank you for for being the guinea pig on that on that role play. <laughs> okay, I, 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 but I, I hope that pricing strategy makes sense. Now, this is outlined in your script book. You should have this either in physical form or you should have an electronic copy of your script book. And in the script book is the pricing strategy. It's outlined in there in great detail. So just realize that in this sort of market that we're in and the market we're moving deeper into that you're gonna to have to have this conversation. You're gonna to need to have a pricing strategy. And it is one of the best ways to separate yourself from your competition, because in most cases, your competition doesn't have a pricing strategy and they're reluctant to have a conversation about price reduction when they're first sitting down taking the listing. They're afraid to do that. Well, the challenge is gang, if you don't have conversations about setting expectations, right? You don't set expectations, you don't cover expectations, you set yourself up for failure in any relationship. And Leslie just noted there that it's on page 42 of your script book, gang. So any questions, any thoughts before we wrap this up? Because we are definitely over time. Nope. That was great. Thank you. All right, of course, you bet. All right, gang. Let's finish Thank it up with some you. closing affirmations. You're welcome. You're welcome. Here we go. Closing affirmations. 